Real 92.3 Big Boys Neighborhood, Natalia here sitting down with one of my favorites because I am such a big fan of the show he is on. Blackish, that's the show I'm talking about. And I have been telling people, legit, anytime I get a chance, I'm like, you need to be watching Blackish because Thank it is you. such a smart, great, funny show with an amazing cast. But right now I'm sitting down with Marcus Scribner. How are you? I'm doing fantastic today. Good. You were telling me uh, just really quickly before we started, you're doing something kind of exciting mm-hmm. that some people do a little bit earlier than yeah. <laughs> than you right now, but I know it's because you get really busy, but mm-hmm. tell everyone what, what's the big exciting news for today. Um, I will be starting driving lessons today. Yeah! So, you know, yeah, let's get it. <laughs> Independence. Um, but yeah, um, I'm actually going to be starting uh, to learn today. I tried in the past with yeah. my dad uh, a few times on some secluded streets, but you know, I just, I just started panicking. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> Are you like trying to drive like stick or something or is it nah, just it's just, just automatic. I'm just I'm just not all the way there when it comes to driving yet. So um uh stay off the roads today. Okay, um got I'll be it. there uh ready to go though. So. so like because of your work schedule and because this amazing life that you get to lead with working on the show Blackish, there are certain things that, you know, some, you know, young adults at your mm-hmm. age, you ha- you're like a little bit behind in a mm-hmm. sense, right? So like do you how come you didn't want to start at like 16? Was it just like too busy or? It was just kind of a choice of mine. I didn't really, I, I didn't really find it necessary okay. since I've been just like going everywhere with um, either my parents or Uber's the thing now. So I just be Ubering to parties and stuff yeah. like that. It's a lot Party. safer, you know what I mean? Um, so I feel like Uber, Uber and just, I, I never really found it like something that I, I really wanted to do. And yeah. finally I wanted to do it now. So I was like, yeah, you know, I, I want to pull up in the new whip and be like, <laughs> what's up ladies? So, do, um, do you have your own car or is it once you get the license, then you're going to get the car right now? We have like a 2008 Kia Spectra, okay. um, for like learning on. Oh, so, uh, that's the Kia. Kia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Kia. <laughs> to get lit. But, um, uh, Soon enough, once I once I get my license, hopefully I'll actually be able to uh, get a new car. <laughs> There's a lot of new life things that are coming up, and we're going to get to that, especially because it's happening on the show as mm-hmm. well. Uh, but you play Andre Johnson Jr. on mm-hmm. uh, uh, Blackish Season 4. I, I'm sure you've been asked this before, but how... Has it been more awkward or rewarding growing up in front of everyone? Because you started, what, 14 or 13? Uh, Yeah, like around, I think it was, yeah, I was just turning 14 when we started the show. So um, it's definitely, at first, it it is kind of awkward because, you know, obviously you're going through all your growing pains and stuff. I was extremely clumsy because my uh, my legs and arms just lengthened by, like, double. It was insane. Um, It's kind of crazy. Like, I was, I just started touring schools Mm -hmm. um, recently. Uh, Yesterday, I was touring UCLA. Oh, wow. was it yesterday? No, it wasn't yesterday. It felt like it was yesterday. <laughs> but I started touring UCLA. I think it was on Saturday for Bruin Day. And like everybody who came up to me to ask for pictures were like, wow, you're so tall. Like You are very tall. Yeah. yeah. It's it's really and it's really strange because I guess when you first start watching the show, I'm 14 years old and I was like, I was extremely yeah. like I was like about average height for a 14 year old and then I just like shot up. So it's been it's been very different growing up in front of the camera. It's I'm sure it's nice though that like you have it like you got to start off a little bit like young but then grow into a man where like some yeah. people have like they're really stuck in a very like they're like maybe start like 6 or 7 and then yeah. they have to go through the full on awkward yeah. like <laughs> awkward phases yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it was uh it's it, it was it's been a blessing like it's kind of cool now cuz at first junior had storylines where he was getting pushed around and now i have storylines where i'm like what's up dre yeah. <laughs> how you doing <laughs> you know at basketball yeah exactly yeah, ball- that was actually a real game by the was way it really i like to point that out to everybody because i balled you up gotta Anthony throw it Anderson. in there yeah so um yeah they were like you know whatever happens that's where the storyline goes and mm-hmm. so i ended up winning obviously so. you know what i love what i do love about blackish is the way that they present these real life social issues mm-hmm. and in such a way where you can Maybe you, oh, I never thought about it that way. Or like, for instance, one episode that I've been talking to a lot of people about recently was the Easter episode. And I oh, really yeah. loved when, um, you know, uh, the grandmother explains why she liked making the plate for her husband. Right. And I was like, damn, I never, I never knew that. I never thought about it that way. And I think that's such a beautiful thing. And so it's, there's always something that I yeah. think your show does. You were 14 when you started the show, but mm-hmm. did you know that 
that was the show you were joining? Like what they've been able to do in the social mm -hmm. so, social topics that they talk about. Um, I feel like at the beginning, we had no clue where the show was going to go or any of those sorts of situations. We knew we had great scripts and yeah. we knew it was funny. Didn't know how it was going to perceive, be perceived by the audience. Um, so I, I think we didn't know we were going to expand into that social aspect. Because if you think about it, some of our um, early scripts were more just like comedy based yeah. things instead of um, actually tackling like issues in America. Um, and I think as the show evolved and our creator, Kenya Barris, he's really um, he's really into current affairs mm -hmm. um, and so are the rest of us. We're all politically active, um, just turned 18, ready to Get vote. It. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that we all just wanted to do something that was unique and special. And I think Blackish really started that trend of yeah. being politically active and but but actually like bringing it to the United States of America because we're on like a mainstream channel. Yeah. It's ABC, so. And to think about also like where we are socially as well, it's really mm -hmm. reflected the times. It's something yeah. that where you are going to be able to look back and say like, I remember what the country was like because it was depicted yeah. so well in the show. Um, so I, I really, again, I'm a fan first. I really praise the show. I love all of it. <laughs> um, you had a great photo the other day uh, with uh, Devante telling everyone like the two, like yeah. these twins, which happens yeah. a lot in Hollywood. Right. Is it harder now to like also have to have a baby around uh, okay, this is what I will say. A lot of people, you know, the the famous saying, "Don't work with children or and pets. animals." Or yeah, animals, and now, yeah. yeah. So um, I know it's kind of funny because now we kind of are doing both of those. Uh, but uh, working with the the babies is great. They are really chill. Oh, like good. they're the chillest babies you'll ever meet. I mean, uh, August and Berlin are super dope, and I finally been able to tell them apart because okay. they're twins. But you can tell by the way they look. Um, but um. They're, they actually kind of speed along our shooting schedule because it's like you got to yeah. get the babies out, you got to get the babies out, and we notoriously take forever to film. So it was kind of nice. <laughs> Why is know. that? Is it because you guys are just having a good time, or um, because we're having a good time, but also because we do like single camera and all that kind of stuff, got it. and we do a little bit more like cinematic filming yeah. sometimes. So it does take a decent bit. What have you learned um, with working with Tracy Ellis Ross and Anthony mm -hmm. Anderson? Um, I think it's just like how to be quick. You know okay. what I mean? Like you got to when you're hanging around like actors that talent who are ready to roast you on the spot mm -hmm. you got to be ready with the comebacks you know what i mean <laughs> so um i think it's just being quick and being in the moment yeah um no, none of our scenes ever end quickly we're always going on for at least like five more mm -hmm. minutes about just some random whatever so <laughs> Uh, it's definitely helped me to be present. I'm sure like people at like, you know, when people are like, oh, you've got three kids who are, who's your favorite kid and you can't mm -hmm. ever choose a favorite, but is there someone that you maybe are the closest with on set <laughs> um, or you love the most? You can even put it out there. I can't even, I, you know who I love is Jennifer Lewis. Jennifer Lewis definitely brings the most <laughs> excitement to our set. I, I see you're yeah. laughing because you've met Jennifer probably. Um, she brings the most excitement, the most stories. That's um, awesome. It may be vulgar at moments, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's nice that you're 18 now at least. Yeah, exactly. Well, she'll make sure. She'll check every okay. time. She's like, you're 18 now, right? And then she'll tell her insane stories. So um, uh, check out Mother of Black Hollywood. Jennifer will want me to plug Dude. that. So, yeah. and, and now, so let's talk about this big thing that's happening on the show. May 8th, the, ep the episode that is airing. It's mm -hmm. a graduation episode for your character, Andre yeah. Jr. And it's coinciding with your life as well. What is this... Are you excited? Are you nervous? What What are you going through? Um, in real life, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm like, whoo, high school's over yes. with because uh, it's just it's been a lot. It's but it's been a lot of fun. Obviously, just going through the years, doing schoolwork mm -hmm. and things like that. Have but, you always done like the homeschool or the like on school set or? Uh, no, I'm from Los Angeles, yeah. so I've always gone to like just public school. And okay. Stuff. I went to uh, Canfield, uh, and then I went to Emerson, and then I went to Hamilton for part of my nice. freshman year. So, um. This has been a, a, a definitely a change, like yeah. doing homeschooling and things like that, being on top of your own schoolwork. I think it's prepared me for college, though, because mm -hmm. you have to like schedule and plan your own stuff. Um, no teacher there to aid you except for the homie Adam Bennett. He's my <laughs> studio teacher. He's actually the GOAT. But um, yeah, it's it's been interesting. I'm kind of excited for graduation. So you're going to, you were saying that you were um, going to go off to college, like where you were touring colleges. So yeah. are you doing what Yara is doing as well? Like yeah. you're going to do like a split or? I'm um, probably going to defer, yeah, okay. defer a year most likely. And then um, either... Try because if I go end up going to it's right now it's a toss up between okay. UCLA and so USC. Haven't I haven't picked, all right. Um, but uh, I've got to tour a bunch of other campuses as well. But um, if I go to UCLA, it's uh, three. I think it's a 
you know, it's quarterly system. Yeah. So I could kind of like work that schedule in where I like kind of stack my classes on okay. certain days um, and hopefully defer and just figure it out eventually because who knows what's going <laughs> to yeah. happen. So, yeah. And the episode that's going to air on May 8th, what what are we going to see in that episode? Um, I, it's it's an interesting episode. Yeah. There's, um, the end of our season is, is um, it's kind of sad, but uh, Rainbow and Dre are having some, yes. <laughs> I uh, know exactly. I I'm very this. I just saw the promo yeah, and I was I, like, uh, I even left a comment. I think it was like on the yeah. ABC Instagram, and I was like, no, this can't happen. <laughs> yeah, in my life. like please, no. I know. As soon as the episode ended, we had a promo for that one, and, and Twitter was just like, no, Black what? Love is dead, and all this kind yes. of stuff, and it was so sad. Um, but yeah, our last few episodes should be pretty interesting. Um, for Junior specifically, obviously he's yeah. graduating and things like that. Um, so he's gonna try to hold the family together mm -hmm. through these moments. He always um, feels like that though. Too. Yeah, like Andre, he's always having to take care of like yeah. when you guys got the dog and you were pretending Sin to be the yeah, dog. Yeah, exactly. To, like, prepare them when you're gone. <laughs> he's the most responsible person yes. there, even more responsible than his parents. So he's he's gonna try and hold everything together yeah. and try to make everything all right for his younger siblings who obviously might not understand completely what's going on. Yeah. So. Um, we definitely have some heartfelt, deep episodes coming okay. up. Yeah, I'm gonna prepare myself. Yeah, bring uh, the tissues. Yeah. Bring the tissues. The waterworks are coming. Yeah. How close would you say you and Andre are in real life? Like your character versus who you are. Um, I think there's definitely there are some similarities, but there are a lot of major differences. I mm -hmm. feel like uh, Andre Jr. is super, super duper gullible. I don't fall yeah. for stuff easily. I'm kind of I'm more of a logical thinker. So Got if it. something doesn't make sense to me, I'm like, nah, fam, I'm cool on that. <laughs> Um, also, I think he's just a lot more like goofy and clumsy and things like yeah. that. But we do both love like comic books, superheroes. I was going like to ask that. you about yeah. that. I, I read somewhere that you were really interested in playing like Spider Man if they ever do like a reboot or something or like yeah, the Miles Morales. Miles Morales. Yeah. Miles Morales is a super dope version of Spider Man. Um, he's got, for people who don't know, he's got like extra abilities. He can go invisible, shoot psionic blasts. I'm not going to get nerdy on you. I but, love, no, I yeah. love it. I love um, I'm but, a huge comic book fan. Yeah, so. and he's also African American, which I think yeah. is dope and he brings an interesting flair to the Spider-Verse which is basically just all different um, versions of Spider-Man you got Noir yeah. 2033 there's just a bunch of different things have you ever met uh, Donald Glover uh, no, I haven't met Donald Glover yet. You gotta yet, meet him. But he is, he's super dope. That dude, like, I mean, what can't he do? I Sing, know. rap, I mean, produce, Voice act, smiles, write, yeah. Voice <laughs> smiles. Uh, he's insane. Oh, and in um, Spider-Man Homecoming, he makes mention of Miles. So everyone was like, oh, snap. See, that's what, when, when I heard that he was going to be in the Homecoming, I was like, mm -hmm. he's going to be, like, he's going to be Miles. Like, something's yeah. going to, like, he, and then it was like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> not exactly what I thought, but whatever. Yeah, but it's like, eh, whatever, yeah. yeah. Can you see yourself be, playing a superhero one day on the big screen? Um, that's the goal. Okay. I mean, I love, obviously, I love superheroes. The Marvel Universe is amazing. Um, I mean, I love DC Universe as well, but it's just... I feel like superheroes just, I, I always imagine myself with, like, I know everybody does with, like, extra abilities and yeah. things like that. So it's kind of, it would be a dream come true to do something like that. What, I always love to ask people, what's your superhero power if you can create one, okay. like, on your own? And, like, this is your power. It's not yeah. you playing a superhero. It's your power. My power. Okay. Um... I feel like one of the most useful powers is telekinesis, where you're okay. able to like move objects yeah. or teleportation because then I could just like go wherever I want. You don't have to worry about that 405. Yeah, forever exactly. Forget the 405. Yeah. I'm just going to blink there real quick. <laughs> yeah. See, mine is I would love to be able to create anything. Like if I was like, I want a hamburger right now. Hamburger, right. but it wouldn't take away from anything anywhere. So if I want, was like, yo, I want like a band right now, like right. if that, let's. Money I want and some I'm, racks real I want quick. Some racks, yeah, yeah. And, but it wouldn't take away from anywhere, and then I could just spread it around. Right, so I it's could... responsible. Yeah, exactly. I mean, but you might crash the economy as well if you create. No, so much it doesn't money. take away from anywhere. It just I'll... appears. Okay, That's okay, all right, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Um, I did notice. A, I want to talk a little bit about oh. music. You had um, you have a uh, Kyle's. I like his lyric on your IG account. Is that your favorite rapper? Or you just I like love that Kyle. Okay. I love Kyle. I don't know if he's my favorite. I love Drizzy as well. I mean, there's just too many people. Um, I actually really love Love Is Rage too. I mean, that that thing is fire. <laughs> Luzi came with it. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm huge into rap. So I who else is on your playlist, or, or at least wait, playlist? what's uh, what's at the top of your list right now? Uh, at the top of my list, it's probably nice for what I know. That's super basic, <laughs> but I'm really enjoying that song right now. Um, probably a uh, Dark Queens as well. Okay. I feel like that's that's a good one. Um, X also off of Uzi's album. I feel like I listen to a lot of Uzi now. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about it. Um, New Freezer. 
uh, King's Dead, uh, just like nice. a lot of stuff. The Black Panther soundtrack is too clean. It's so good. Yeah. And it, like, congratulations to uh, Kendrick Lamar. Did you hear he yeah, won the Pulitzer? Yeah, damn, got the Pulitzer. That's insane. That's, yeah. I mean, to be able for him to be recognized for that, I thought was really cool. And, yeah. And for that damn album. That album was, like, just amazing, though. So I, I think it was well-deserved. And just congratulations to Kendrick. Shout out to you. Yeah. L.A. represent. Yes, yeah, so you're born and raised in L.A. Do you <laughs> feel that that gave you a different perspective of the lifestyle that you live being in an actor in the business as mm -hmm. opposed to someone who lives in middle of, you know, Wisconsin and all of a sudden they come out here and they, you know, are like, Hollywood. Right. Like exactly. you had this different perception, I'm sure, right? Yeah. To me, like growing up even like Hollywood was like nothing like you didn't really even want to go to Hollywood yeah. every time I go uh you like go I don't down. need souvenirs yeah exactly <laughs> I don't need souvenirs and it's like kind of like it's kind of like living in New York and going to Times Square you don't really yeah. want to do that you know what I mean like it's kind of it's it's more of a tourist trap mm -hmm. area so I never really associated um that with like acting or anything acting was just something that I enjoyed um doing because I've always loved reading stories okay. characters things like that and my parents introduced me to acting class they were like do you want to try this because I didn't really have any hobbies I just did school Schoolwork. Yeah, and then I was like, "Yeah, this is actually fun." So I just kept doing it, um, and I think being from Los Angeles, you definitely focus on the other aspects of the city, mm -hmm. um, like just everything else besides like For Hollywood sure. and the whole business yeah. and stuff. So, and do you do you see yourself ever expanding outside of acting or mm -hmm. doing music or writing, directing? Um, I have been recently. I've been working on producing a lot of projects, okay. coming up with ideas um, with my team and my dad and things like that. So. Um, that's been a lot of fun. Uh, I've expanded into voice acting as well. Um, acting is really my passion. Yeah. So, uh, but I've also been thinking about writing too because um, when I was younger, I used to write short stories and things like Duh. that. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping to work on all aspects mm -hmm. of um, of like a film, like direct, yeah. write, you know, produce things like that. We so. got to be able to wear like a thousand different hats in like, yes. this industry now. Especially if you want to create opportunities for yourself, you have to, and other people like your mm -hmm. friends and, and people of color as well. Um, you have to be able to, to do everything. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's but like you said, like right now, I feel like it is this really exciting time within the industry of mm -hmm. movies like Black Panther and yeah. Get Out where people are being represented and hopefully we can expand these stories because there's so many other different stories that need to be told, not yeah. just these like ones that we've already seen over and over exactly. again. Exactly. Just like recast and just like, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, got, I saw that you also went to the March for Our Lives. Yes. How important is it for you to, um, as someone who is in the younger generation of being able to stand up and like speak for your, your rights and mm -hmm. make sure that we're speaking out for everyone. I think that March for Our Lives was um, a great example of uh, the power that we have when, when everyone unites together um, on a single issue. Um, things haven't really like been able, we haven't enacted complete change yet because obviously, you know, Congress mm -hmm. is kind of in the pocket of the NRA yes. currently. Um, but I feel like just showing the strength of the American people and what we can do when we put our minds to something, uh, especially this generation, we really have the power to um, change the world. And I think that was super important for me um, to come out there and just like represent and uh, and and really show what my ideals mm -hmm. were. And and uh, it was an exciting movement, just like all the energy. Yeah. Everybody was there. Um, thinking about the same thing so do you get a lot of support on being a, on speaking out for your rights or you know mm -hmm. your ideas and thoughts that you want out there uh from your family as well yes exactly like my my mother and my dad they've always taught me to just like say whatever is on my mind and what i feel is right and i think that it's important um for us to enact change in our world ourselves and go out there and do yeah. it so um, I think that they've definitely inspired me to um, work on a lot of the issues that I have. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I got to say, like, I think the generation, uh, you know, the, your generation, because I'm a little bit older than you, I'm not going to say, <laughs> but like to be able to be to look at a younger generation and be like, damn, I'm inspired. Like, mm -hmm. again, like I thought we could bring on change and sometimes you get knocked down and you're like, you know, this didn't change or this didn't right. go the way we thought. Like on, on election night, like I woke up, I couldn't even watch the rest of it because I was like, yeah. I woke up and I was like, I don't know. It was so hard to come to work. It was yeah. hard to come to work and talk about it and be like, no, this isn't real. This I isn't thought, because I think the issue was like, everybody was like, it, it, it was, we were so comfortable with the fact it was like, oh yeah, Hillary Clinton's going to yeah. win. Like, there's no way they elect exactly. Donald Trump. 
and then it ended up happening and we were sideswiped. But it kind of also goes back to like the electoral college, like in how that whole system is rigged in the uh, Republicans' favor. But we won't talk about that right now. We could, you could always talk about that. With yeah, you. <laughs> but, um, yeah. But no, but I, I love that. Like I was saying, being able to look at the generation after me and say, mm -hmm. you guys are inspiring me or re-inspiring me as mm -hmm. well. Because a lot of times it's like, oh, look to your elders for inspiration on right. what you should do. But to be able to look at people younger than you and say, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what we should be doing. So yeah. thank you for that. Oh, and, uh, you, you know, yeah. being out there and representing for everyone. Um, <laughs> I do uh, want to talk because uh, last week I had uh, Chloe and Hallie in. Oh, yeah. And I know they're part of like the Blackish Grownish yeah, family right yeah. there. <laughs> and I heard a little something, something. Okay. So I want you to set the record straight. Okay. Are you and Hallie together? Oh, uh, no, not at I'm all. I'm just kidding. I made that oh, up. I was, I was like, to, I that's was the homie. Say. That's the homie. Yeah. No, I love Chloe and Hallie. They are dope. Their new album is complete is so fire. I mean, the whole thing is dope. Um, and Warrior from um, uh, Wrinkle in Time. Wrinkle in Time is like super, like, that song just gets me inspired. And every yeah. time I hear the Gronish theme song opening, it's just like they have so many amazing songs. They're so. really talented. Yeah. Like, damn. They are amazing. Yeah. I really, really like them. And um, But have you had a lot, any time to spend with um, Yara on the other set of Gronish or maybe like <laughs> do some more scenes over there? Um, I've gone over to see the set a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, but. People have been asking me, they're always like, Junior waiting. would be so dope on Grownish and things like that. Um, so we will see what the future holds. Okay. Uh, it should be some exciting times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what are you going to be doing this summer when uh, you're not filming? When, when do you guys stop filming? You already stopped filming? Yeah, we're, we're on hiatus okay, right now. Okay, so you go yeah. until when? Um, I think it's like August. Okay. So yeah, I'm not even completely <laughs> sure. I'm like. <laughs> so besides the driving lessons mm -hmm. and the graduation, what else are you going to be doing this um, yes, I will be off. working on a lot of different projects. I actually just wrapped a um, an indie film that should be coming out pretty soon, Confessionals, so that should be pretty cool. Um, I've been working on producing, writing, things like that, creating my own ideas. Uh, I've got a nice dope project that I can't really say too much <gasps> about. Drop the exclusive. But, yeah, I can't drop it <laughs> no, yet. Okay. I will be sued. But um, you know how non-disclosures are, but it should oh, be. Oh, you mean you've been hanging out with uh, Beyonce? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that situation, <laughs> we won't get on that. But uh, By the way, do you know who bit Beyonce? Who bit Beyonce? Yeah, you didn't hear who, I don't know who bit Beyonce. I'm just wondering, everyone, like, that's uh -uh. so, the story was someone bit Beyonce and everyone wrote, an, uh, signed an NDA, and then you have to, like, no one can say anything because of the NDAs with Beyonce. Oh, I had no clue. Oh, I well, I mean, I've, I've heard of one story about NDAs with Beyonce. I was like, yeah. okay. <laughs> she yeah. used, I mean, she raps, sings about it, but still. Yeah, you know, she, she probably just, like, hands out the paper. She's like, I, boom, boom, NDA. Seriously. But, I mean, when you're balling like that, you got it. You, you got know it. how it is. You got it. But, yeah. Um... What but that's it. You're busy. Yeah, you're yeah, busy. yeah. We're busy. Good. We're doing a lot of things. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming in mm -hmm. here again. Blackish is such an amazing show. Thank you for being thank a part you. of it. Thank you for having it on and doing all that you do, uh, Marcus. I really can't wait to. Uh, I I, I want to say I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the episodes. But <laughs> again, you told me to be prepared. Yeah. So. <laughs> but I am going to watch it. Yeah. And I'm going to be. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're, we're all gonna, gonna watch it. it and just like we're gonna pray. Okay. We're gonna pray. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Oh,